In terms of clients, uh, I really spend a lot of my time working with young adults, veterans, uh, members of the LGBTQ community, couples, older adults, and a lot of my career has been working with college students or college age students. As for presenting issues, I specialize in treating trauma, mood disorders, severe and persistent mental illness, stage of life concerns, personality disorders, couples and marital therapy, uh, and family of origin concerns. Many people come to the th come to therapy wanting the external world around them to change. And as much as I could wave a wand, snap a finger, and make bad bosses go away, abusive partners to be healthy, illnesses to disappear, uh, therapy really does need to focus on, on the internal locus of control. But this can make therapy challenging, but at the same time, it makes it deeply rewarding, empowering, and validating one's experience of the world. Um, I also consistently talk about the mistakes that I make in treatment. Therapists are not mind readers, and, and thank God for that. I would never want that power. So I do the best I can come up with clinical guesses, presumptions, interpretations of behavior. And, and cli clients sometimes say that they, they don't want to disagree because they don't want to hurt my feelings. And I regularly plead with my clients to do this. Uh, give me feedback, help me create a collaborative process. Uh, I may be a subject matter expert on, on psychotherapy, but I'm not the subject matter expert on the client. That resides solely with the person I'm sitting across from. I conceptualize people from a psychodynamic frame, which is that we are a product of our upbringing, the product of the environment that we were raised in. And this doesn't, doesn't just mean your parents, it means friends, first loves, partners, high school, college. Um, there are some things that you're born with, but other things that you learn to be. Um, and I think therapy should be challenging just as much as it is supporting. The therapist paradox is always present. How do you support someone while also wanting them to change? I love to work with clients who are open to being challenged and pushed past their comfort zones. Um, with that being said, this is done methodically and at the pace of the client that they're most comfortable with. Um, but at the end of the day, therapy is supposed to be a profession of extinction. I work so that I'm not needed anymore. Seeing somebody leave therapy better off than the way that they came in is the reward of the work. I love it when I get an email a letter two, three years later down the line saying that they were in a much better place. But that makes the work worthwhile. Um, that's what I like most about being a therapist is getting to the point that someone is fundamentally happier and better off than when they came into treatment. I want to offer a metaphor here. Uh, try to imagine having a car that the check engine light comes on. And, and sure, you can postpone that, right? It's just a check engine light. It's not that big a deal. The car's driving, uh, but then you wait and the, and the car starts to buckle and it starts to break down. But you don't really have the time, money, maybe energy to get it fixed. So you park it, you borrow someone else's car, you rent, you buy another, and you're waiting for some point in the future for you to dedicate the time and energy to fix it. And then in the snap of a finger, 10 years goes by and you become reminiscent. And you go out to the car and you pull the tarp off and you get in it and you're excited and you turn the key and nothing happens. And you bring it to the mechanic and you ask for it to be repaired and the first question they ask is, why did you wait so long? Why didn't you bring this in sooner? I can fix this, but it's gonna take a lot of time and, and a lot of effort. Uh, and I, I personally myself have been in that position. Please don't procrastinate your mental health. Um, therapy does not make problems worse. Avoiding problems makes problems worse.